Okay, we're here in the Shoshone River Canyon, a few miles west of the town of Cody. Uh, Buffalo Bill Reservoir is just up above. Uh, we can see this really narrow, tight and scenic canyon below us here, um, leading over to, uh, here's a power plant down here and then looking down to the east. Um, this, this is a pretty cool spot. Um, this video will dovetail pretty nicely with another one I did in the Wasatch Mountains of Utah, high above the town of Willard. Uh, we're going to see a really special feature here today. And I guess, shoot, this is maybe, I've seen this at the bottom of the Grand Canyon and the Wasatch. So maybe this is, without adding it up, the third time I've seen this particular feature um, in person. And so, uh, we're going to look at the rocks here a little bit and then I'll show you this feature from this vantage point because we can see it in at least two places and then back down by the road we can see it in a lot more detail up close. So let's start with um, looking at the rocks a little bit here. We can see this, this super narrow deep canyon and if we kind of look in the distance you might be able to see a lot of kind of slashes and, and uh, zigzags in the rock. Uh, if we kind of look down here, you might see a little bit of that as well. Um, looking across this canyon here, you might see some pink stripes uh, cutting through what's otherwise some grayish rock. Let's look at the gray rock first. We have a little bit exposed up here. Um, so this is mainly granite. So we've got crystals in here, a very coarse texture. In the granite, here's a set of climbing anchors up here. So there's a rock climb just below us. And then if we look at some of the pink material, um, let's see, I actually thought I had a piece of it out. Let's check down here and see if we can get a nice close up view. This will work pretty well. Um, this pink material is uh, much more coarsely crystalline. Right here, you can see it cutting through the granite. And this is what's known as a pegmatite. So this is uh, an igneous rock with really large crystals. In this case, most of the crystals are uh, quartz and potassium feldspar. There are places in here, here we go, a little rock I found, where it does have some uh, muscovite mica crystals in it. So hopefully you can see some of those shiny little crystals right in here so there is a little bit of muscovite mica in here as well and these rocks are between 2.8 and 3.1 billion years old so these are those basement rocks these are the rocks that we typically only see either where there's been enough up uplift or enough erosion to expose them typically these rocks are buried beneath younger rocks like we can see these limestones here on the skyline but in this location in wyoming We've had two events take place. One, uh, uplift, the uplift of the Absarica range during the Laramide orogeny, a big mountain building event at the end of the Cretaceous about uh, 90 to 70 million years ago or so. And then also the erosion of the Shoshone River has cut down through these rocks as well. So offering a nice exposure into these otherwise and often somewhat excess, inaccessible rocks. So here we have these basement rocks. Nices, there are nices in here too as well, but granites mainly, a little bit of nices, and then these pink pegmatite dikes cutting through them, which are just a little bit younger than the rocks themselves. And then if we look over here, we see something very different. We can see there's some rocks layered uh, sitting just on top of these. So here again, the basement rocks, across the road, basement rocks down low, just to the right of the tunnel. But then we get some very different rocks, layered rocks, sedimentary rocks, and those seem to continue all the way up the hillside, uh, culminating with these gray limestones way up above. We can also see that there's a bit of a angle to these rocks. These rocks are, are tilted or dipping to the right here, which is to the east. We can see these also if we look across the canyon um, we can see these as well down here by the power plant you can see the dark gray rocks with a little bit of pink behind them 
that's the basement rocks and then right where that that little aqueduct is about halfway up you can see this nice pronounced uh, contact and then these kind of buff colored sedimentary rocks that are dipping to the east which is now to the left in this case so basement rocks down here at the bottom of the canyon and then sedimentary rocks sitting up above so what's the cool feature well we have here an, un an unconformity um, in this case it's a non-conformity because we have igneous and metamorphic rocks crystalline rocks below the unconformity and above the unconformity we have these bedded layered sedimentary rocks what's awesome about this unconformity and the reason it's special is the amount of time it represents so these bedded sedimentary rocks here are cambrian in age they're about 520 or 30 million years old and they're sitting right on top of these over two and a half billion year old basement rocks so that unconformity that actual contact between the two represents over two billion years of earth's history and because this unconformity represents so much time and we find it in places like the bottom of the grand canyon or uplifted mountain ranges like the tetons or the wasatch or here in northwest wyoming this is called the great unconformity um, and so it's really kind of special because it represents so much time the fact that you have these rocks which formed miles tens of miles below the earth's surface and now sitting on top of them is a sandstone that's not just a sandstone it's a beach sandstone so that basically records sea level or very close to sea level at the time that formed um, that's what makes this unconformity so special you've got these ancient rocks that sh that formed miles beneath the surface juxtaposed nicely against these rocks that formed right at the earth's surface the great unconformity um, so we'll go over here in a second and look at it in a little bit closer detail we oftentimes see cambrian rocks riding up over these basement rocks forming a great unconformity because in the cambrian sea level was rising and so you can imagine as the ocean starts to ride up and onlap the continents at the time um, you would get sands deposited on that shoreline and that's what these uh, represent here so we'll head down uh, off the hill really the unconformity is right here as well I've got basement rocks uh, right underneath my feet here and then right across here you can see these bedded and buff colored sandstones but let's give these things a little bit more of a look-see here we'll go down by the road luckily there's not a ton of traffic so it shouldn't be too noisy so right there I've just walked across the great unconformity uh, and in here we can see the sandstones uh, kind of a coarse sand if we find a place where we can look at it up close um, and we can kind of see some cross beds I think we'll see those better down below so let's keep going down this little trail here so we've got the buff Cambrian sandstone this is called the flathead sandstone or the flathead formation in this part of Wyoming but it's correlative or the same essential unit as uh, what I showed you above Willard Utah where, where it's called the Tinnit Quartzite the bottom of the Grand Canyon it's the Tapete sandstone but essentially it's all the same unit so here we have these well bedded sands right here uh, and then my feet are on the basement rocks again the pegmatites with the nice big shiny muscovite crystals uh, and here's the contact right here um, we can pretty much put our finger on it oh this is exciting right here I've got basement rocks under my hand and sitting on top of them are these coarse sands part of the flathead formation the Cambrian age sands so the uh, the great unconformity let's give you one more look at it pop down this thing so this beautiful sharp contact across this road cut right here is the contact between the basement rocks uh, there's some drill holes here where they had to blast through and then the beautiful sandstones up above and then you can see the contact kind of dives down to the east again really nice contact here between the pegmatite and the granite kind of cutting across there um, and then 
another kind of zone in here where the pegmatite cuts upwards through these rocks and hopefully you can see these but again these really pretty shiny muscovite crystals uh, forming in the pegmatite um, on the other side of the road the contacts uh, just to the right of the tunnel there so pretty awesome here in northwest wyoming uh, i had to stop sort of a, a holy site when it comes to geologic locations but here you go the great unconformity uh, very accessible just basically pull off the road as you exit the last tunnel coming from the west at buffalo bill reservoir on your way to cody wyoming with cambrian limestones up above enjoy